I started in, in my railroad, and really, I guess, when I was about five years old, my dad had a layout. And as a family thing, we used to go down to the railroad station in the evenings after dinner and uh, watch the passenger trains come in and watch the freights go by. And so I really became uh, enamored with railroads at a very early age. Keith Clark has turned his childhood love for trains into a lifelong hobby, collecting all things railroad, and above all, recreating the railroad experience on a miniature scale. I've been working on this layout for, uh, I think it's like 20 years now. I started about two years after we built the house, made sure that the house had a good basement in it so I could put my trains in it. There's much more to model railroading than you think there is. A lot of us like to strive for uh, a kind of a realistic environment for the trains to run through and have a, a reason for the trains to be where they are. We have timetables, we have switch lists, we have what we call car cards or waybills. We just try to make it as realistic as possible in terms of operating a railroad. Of course, every hobby is twice the fun when you share it with fellow enthusiasts. Every week, Keith meets with a group of local miniature railroaders. Everybody kind of has their own little expertise as to what they can do and, and can't do. We do uh, um, a lot of troubleshooting if uh, there's problems yeah. with track work. Yeah. You can see that there's it's an angle backwards. here. Yeah. This is a nice smooth curve with the... Okay, uh, yeah. So what uh, if there's uh, construction to be done, we work on, on constructing things. If it's scenery, if it's uh, bench work, if it's track laying. Tonight, the group meets in the home of Robert Sharp. They are members of the National Model Railroad Association. Bill Litkenhouse is the president of the Midwest chapter, and Steve Studley heads the Central Indiana Division, which boasts more than 300 members. Sometimes two hands is not enough. You need to have four or six or eight. And Two heads are always better than one and figuring out things to do and even after we think we have all the problems worked out and it's going to be uh, a perfect layout, we find things that we say, oh, we got to tear that up and fix it. Having a layout is kind of an ongoing thing. Even if you think you, you get finished with it, you're always going to be making changes to it. I don't know of anybody who ever totally completes their layouts. In fact, Keith is already planning a completely new design. Yeah, this layout's going to get, get changed. Uh, actually, most of it's going to come out, and uh, I'm going to expand, and I'm going to model the Grand Trunk Western from Chicago to Port Huron, Michigan. And uh, so I was born and raised in Battle Creek, Michigan, and so I'm going to go back and try to duplicate what I grew up with. It's a little bittersweet to think that you know this is going to come down but I think after 20 years or so that uh, it's gotten its function it's it's gotten its its use and and I've learned immensely from working on it and now I'm going to just take everything that I learned from this one and apply it to the next one and hopefully come up with something that's better than this one my biggest regret is that I, I have to get this one out of the way before I can start the new one I guess and, and that's a, a big job in itself it's hard to imagine that his work of 20 years will simply disappear, but then model railroaders seem to enjoy an engineering challenge and the quest for a more perfect layout. You know, I love to go out and, and chase the real thing and, and wait at a grade crossing for two hours for one to show up, and that's pretty dedicated, but uh, it's been a great hobby over the years. I'd recommend it to, to anybody. If you are interested in model railroading or simply want to get to know more about it, check out the website of the National Model Railroad Association. The NMRA celebrates its 75th anniversary this year, and it has more than 18,000 members nationwide. Its local clubs offer workshops, youth programs, contests, open houses, and other fun activities. And now we go down to French Lick, Indiana, where segment producer Regan McCarthy and videographer Bill Shaw are on board to cover some history of the criminal kind. 